Welcome to Origin Stories. I'm RD. I'm Parrot. We're telling stories behind the digital art revolution. Each week we interview top artists and live stream with the community. Let's go. Today is tomorrow's Origin Story. Story. People, welcome to Origin Stories. What up, buddy? How we doing? Doing great, We're man. Live. We're, We're epi- live. Or... We're not live. We're not live. <laughs> We're recording. Episode 50, man. It's a big milestone, and I can't think of anyone anyone more fitting to be on it. I appreciate that, sir. I appreciate that. The big question that leads, people, what is your origin story? Okay, while you go right into it, I guess I thought we were warming up a little, and then you just really just kind of dive in there. <laughs> What's literally the hardest, most loaded question? Just give it to you all up front. Hope you have your coffee. Uh, my origin story. Um, well, I went to school. We'll give you the 30 second version. Time me 30 seconds on the clock. Here we go. I went to school, went to school for computer science, uh, realized I didn't want to be a programmer. thought I wanted to make video games, realized I didn't want to be a programmer, started making art on the side started making got a job doing web design full-time started making bj clips and uh concert visuals for free that those sort of like blew up started doing the everydays those got more and more popular then sold the thing nft for a lot of money and here we are and here we (laughs) (laughs) take a few pit stops along the journey every day is number one what are you thinking that day I want to get better. And then day two, same thought. Same thought. Amazing. Yeah, um, like that's, and also like, this is, <laughs> I want to get better and this is very bad. Like that's the other <laughs> thing. It's like, that's the overwhelming thought is like, wow, this sucks. Like, this is not how I'm like, I'm picturing it in my head, and then when I put it on the thing, it's like, that's not the thing. That <laughs> looks like crap. Um, so I think, honestly, a, like, not a huge sense of satisfaction with a lot of my work is definitely also kind of a paradoxically good thing in a way, and that I think it kind of, like, drives me to sort of, like, keep being like no that could be way better because there's because that's the thing I mean you see it there's so many like insanely insanely talented people out there it's just like you scroll through and it's like what the and it's just like amazing thing amazing thing amazing thing like everybody's working on such amazing amazing things I think it's I think and then that can be tough because it, it can be mentally draining comparing yourself to like everybody else but yeah it's it's definitely there's, I, and I do draw inspiration a lot from other people's work. So it's definitely, you know, an exciting time to be creating, but can also be draining as well. For sure. And how do you make the decision to share that pain? Because today it's a little bit more open to be authentic and, and put yourself out there in a raw fashion. When you started every day, that was less the norm. It, it was less common. So feeling that way, how do you brave it out? Um... I don't know to me it doesn't really like feel brave like what do you mean brave well, I think about per- raw. I personally consider it brave you know feeling feeling raw feeling like my work can improve feeling like maybe this sucks at times looking to your left looking to your right making comparisons and yet saying I'm going to share this process with the world over and over and over again oh sure 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 um yeah I feel like that like once you again sort of the momentum of it once you get into that rhythm the momentum carries you and it becomes like it doesn't feel like a choice like it doesn't like feel like oh each day i'm being brave it's just like i have to do this thing and like that's it and it is what it is and like everybody knows i have to do the thing and everybody knows i have a lot of stuff going on yeah and so it's like yeah i don't know it, it kind of like it is what it is and like I, I think the other recognition is understanding that most people, most people don't give any fuck what you're doing. Like they yeah, do not. True. 
shit. Like the vast, vast majority of people on earth give zero fuck about anything you're doing or will ever do. They just do not care. Um, and so like assuming everybody's like, oh my God, everybody's going to be so like, if I do this or that, it's like people, most people don't care. You're like fighting for their attention. Like, trust me. Uh, and so going in with that mindset, it kind of frees you to just be like, okay, I'm just going to do whatever the hell I'm going to do. And like, it is what it is. And like that, all you can do is try your best and like, that's it. And, and you'll win some, you'll lose some, but like it, 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 getting too in your head about like if people are, you know, watching you or expecting this or that, they're not. It's a big unlock. People don't care as much as you think they do is one of my favorite quotes in the world. Very, very true. That's wait, who was that? Who was that quote? I don't even know. I'm, I can't attribute it because I lost it, but it <laughs> was someone great. Quotes in the world. I have no idea. What you're saying. No idea. No idea. <laughs> Skip it ahead a little bit. Skip it ahead. I'm going to go one more everyday question. Then we're going to pivot to NFTs. Day 5,000, the big one, right? Day 5,000, skipping ahead literal years. What is your thought process that day? How do you choose what to depict on 5,000? Um, on the 5,000th day, the picture is kind of like me as a kid drawing around a bunch of like weirdo characters. It's a good way um, to put it. A bunch of characters that I've used throughout the like every day. And so they're, they're kind of like standing all around. And so it's like Trump and Pikachu and Buzz and weirdo boob, whatever, Michael Jackson. Um, and so I just wanted to sort of bring together all of these sort of like themes and sort of like there's other little nods to like little people and like things that have been sort of um, parts of, of what I've done over the last you know, sort of course of this project um, and, and wanting to do like that picture obviously looks better. That's because I spent like, you know, 12 hours on it. Like mm -hmm. I spent a huge amount of time and like wanting to really sort of like recognize, you know, that moment. But it, what's crazy is at that time, I did not know what was coming. Like literally it, like the, the Christie's thing came like, like two weeks after that yep. but it was like somebody reached out and it was like oh chris just wants to do this thing and it's like yeah crazy so you did that five thousand every day and then in the two weeks after the christie's thing came together so i did that five thousandth every day and then two weeks later ryoma from maker's place reached out to me and he was like oh you know would you be interested in doing this thing with this person i can't <laughs> say who but it's it's good. And I'm like, that's great. And I said to him, it's Christie's or Sotheby's, I will definitely do it. And then it turned out it was Christie's. And like a week later, they were like, yeah, let's do it. Amazing. Yeah. Like, Let, let's segue to NFTs, but go a step before that. Uh, do you know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow. Tomorrow's October tomorrow. 30th. First drop. First drop, one year. Take us back, entry into NFTs, how you find them and how you make the decisions surrounding the first drop. The people just kept coming up to me, like kept being like, dude, what, what, you got to check this out. And I looked at it once in the summer and I think it was Flamingo Dow mm -hmm. that I like, I think it was Flamingo Dow or it was one of the Dows. And, and, or some DeFi thing or something. I don't know what the fuck it was. And, and it was just like, yeah, that was the first thing of any of this that I saw. Just like a web page with like roadmap and blah, blah, blah. And it was just like, what in the fuck is this? I, I have <laughs> no idea what this staking protocols, what in the, like no idea any like DeFi, no idea what that means. Like anything. And so it was like, what the fuck? I, I have no idea what this is. This is not for me, dude. This guy is very wrong. Uh, this is not for me um and then people kept bugging me though like Did you, are you gotta check this out and so i looked at it again ah, not to, not for me dude this is i don't know what these people are like talking about and then again and then and then i looked at it again and and then for some reason i looked at super rare and then i recognized a lot of people i knew and then it was sort of like 
but like, you know, 20 of them, of the like, you know, hundreds of, of digital artists that I know, thousands of digital artists that I know. And so it, it, it was suddenly like, wait a second, I know all of these people. And so, it's a, and, and Pac was like the, the sort of like number one person on Super Rare. So it was just like, wait a second, I know Pac. I immediately text him, Pac, what the fuck is going on? What is this? Like, and then he's just like, oh, dude, let me tell you, this, <laughs> you're going to like this. And, and he explained the like whole thing to me. And then it was like, boom, then it like, wait a second. And, and immediately it was just like, immediately clicked and immediately was just like, boom. like, yeah, completely sort of like consumed with trying to understand it and the possibilities and, and sort of yeah just immediately saw the massive massive potential i feel like i mean your work was preparing for that for years i mean what who better right Every- it, it weirdly was because it was like especially especially with the everydays when i realized like i started again going because i uh, here's the thing that's very interesting about this is i am not in any way a collector of anything mm-hmm. uh like nothing like I've never had that mindset and so when I realized with the everydays they're kind of like already sort of like each day it's got numbers it's it's already got all this like you know metadata stuff built into it Mm -hmm. that it really is like perfect for like collecting but again no sort of like you know pre-thought on my part um it definitely uh was just like you know kind of huge unlock but like getting into that mindset um you know it, it's definitely been very interesting and, and sort of like fun for me so nifty gateway becomes the first move of people's nft experience how do you make that decision and then putting the three artworks that you did into that drop so we that was because i talked to them the next day it was sort of like as soon as i talked to Pac. I believe that was like a Thursday and I was like what the fuck and then I realized I have of these people that already emailed me it's like oh yeah I look up nifty gateway search my inbox there's Tommy K bro yeah. waiting for you I was like oh shit and I just ignored it because I was like I don't know what the fuck this is I fucking heard a nifty gateway <laughs> a so emails. many nifty gateway emails went to spam folders and i get a million emails a day so i don't know what the fuck this is i don't know your crypto bullshit <laughs> <laughs> the um no so then it was like dude i am in i am interested um and so then we talked and when i was talking to tommy it we kind of like came up with the idea of sort of like something changing on for the like trump thing i was sort of like Mm-hmm. you know hearing that they could be dynamic and realizing that that has a massive massive potential now you're seeing that with sort of human one the full sort of like recognize recognizing that potential for these things to be dynamic um it immediately with even that that first trump thing so i was sort of like oh could we do something to change based on the election they were like yeah and it was like oh okay let's do it and so that was sort of like i kind of Honestly, on that first phone call, just because I had talked to them first and we'd had this idea and they were like like down to do it. Um, it it sort of made sense. The other thing I really liked about them at the time too was that they accepted cash. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that I, I still do think that's a just easier way to like on onboard people. And I was always from the beginning of this sort of wanting to focus on bringing as many new people to this and sort of helping them recognize this whole thing as being mainstream as just being like oh yeah people collect this or like what that's just like a thing that like everybody knows about and like maybe you're into it maybe you're not but like everybody knows about it. Uh, which is not the case now right. um, not remotely the case and i think a lot of people maybe don't recognize that that this is way more underground and niche than you think and that, mm-hmm. that if you told the average person that they'd be like what the fuck are you talking about i don't know i think sometimes people get a little like insular in the like crowd and 
sometimes it's hard to like take a step back and realize it's still very, very small and sort of, yeah, niche. I think that's spot on. You know, going back to your decision making, I, I think it's one, I think it's funny that you name one of your artworks crypto is bullshit, right? Now talking to you, it lines up, it makes complete sense. Um, Which but, I don't think. Just no, I know, I know. There are rumors, you son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> you heard it here on Origins. Uh, but what I really like about your entry is, is a couple of things. Is that one, you recognize right away the opportunity for dynamic NFTs, which I think is still something that's being, I mean, we're going to get to human one, something that's still being explored, still unlocking possibilities. But nevertheless, you realize that from essentially day one. Number two, that you take the responsibility to onboard people. I think that's pretty special also from day one. And then three, in line with that, that you do set a low bar. You, you have that addition for a dollar. You know, politics is bullshit, right? Right back there. Um, you have that Wait, addition. you got one, you son of a bitch. Nice. Not for a dollar, not for a dollar, my friend. Not for a dollar, but I got one. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Let's go. I didn't, I didn't notice that. <laughs> That's sweet. That is great. So how how's how about the dollar? You know, the, the first two we talked a little bit about, but going a step further, looking out and saying, I want to help onboard people and I'm gonna make this available for a dollar a piece. How do you come to that? And, well, okay, so here's the thing with that dollar, I, if I'm being totally honest. I, I, I mean, I still, I still would have done it, but I did not know it was gonna like. I thought I was maybe giving away like you know ten thousand dollars, maybe, because it was sort of like I thought like m these were gonna be like maybe worth a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. like at some point, like I didn't even think they'd be worth a hundred dollars necessarily, like right away mm -hmm. for sure, and so it was sort of like. I did not realize remotely the like demand. And it, it was sort of just something that I wanted to do to like kind of like because that, that that's it's it's it wasn't that hard for me because that's what I've been doing like the, the, my entire career is like giving away project files, giving away like BJ clips, like giving away this or that. And so this wasn't like this like, whoa, what am I doing? It's just like, oh, I'm giving away a hundred of these like nft things that i don't even know what the fuck they are really barely i just learned of them two weeks ago are these people want these digital files okay here like we'll see go for it guys i don't know and then it was like holy shit wow people really want these digital files okay that's that's the thing uh, and so that but that's the thing it was so exciting and fun for me like that night seeing like people like making money and like oh my god somebody sold this for like a thousand bucks like that's amazing. Like somebody sold it for like, you know, 5,000 bucks. Like what the fuck? Like that was like, just so I'll never forget that night. And just like, just this feeling of being able to share this like joy, like, cause you know, that guy who sold that, you know, he's having a freaking great night. And so, yeah, that to me is just like super exciting. And this like particular NFT politics is bullshit. Just to share with you personally, I, I think this is, to me, I think it's forever cemented, at least in my mind, who cares, but like a top five all time grail NFT. I think you captured the climate, the climate that still exists in this country, you know. To, uh, well, that's not going away. That's, that's not going away. Let's be honest. You're right. That's you're, always going to be the case. So yeah. I feel like that one will age pretty well. Yep. And the time and place right at the tip the tip of the parabolic run of NFTs and the first drop and people entering the space. I don't know. I just think it's, it's pretty damn special. So I, I just spent a little bit of time on that with you. I appreciate that. Buddy. I appreciate that. Let's skip ahead. So we know that so much happened in the middle. I think a lot of people are well aware of the $69 million sale at Christie's. We talked about that. You have, you had the, the extensive drop with bull run and into the ether and infected and the incredible boxes that you put together, so much detail, so much nuance, but we only have so much time. And I wanna make sure to give a grand stage to what you're working on right now, which uh, is just a couple days, it was just talked about yesterday, right? Yeah, as of recording, and it'll be a few days later when this is released. Yeah, which is yesterday. Yeah, amazing. How's it yeah, feel? Uh, um, it feels good. It definitely was a, piece that came together very quickly but the more we kind of dug in the more we realized that there's a lot of just aspects of this that are really exciting and I think going to be really fun to continue to explore and 
um, the idea that this is a very fungible token um, that does change and will change and already is changing as of this writing um, to me is very exciting because it's sort of like it's this thing on the blockchain that you get to kind of continually check in with instead of just it's there it's the image never going to change that's it it's like i think the idea of nfts being this continually changing thing is a concept that we're barely at the surface of but that will be the most prevalent uh use case for nfts personally that's what i think but could be wrong i think you're spot on now is are there limits to what you can do with the backgrounds because i have to say and I wrote this when you posted it, you surprised, like it was another surprise. I think it's another example of you trailblazing ahead and, and seeing the physical with those extensive screens that you have control over. Are you boxing in the number of artworks and landscapes that you can rotate or can you just continue to add and, and change and evolve? No, we can continue to add and change call because it's the boxes are like giant, like crazy expensive inside them they have two it's basically four screens mm -hmm. um rotating on a motor they're they hold a sort of like cage of, of sort of like electronics and have sort of like polished aluminum sort of like casing um and it's like perfectly in sync with the like motor the like rendering like how it like plays um and then, but the the box itself, we have the ability to just, you know, sort of hook it to the local Wi-Fi, and as and as soon as it has internet connection, then we can just remote into it and just immediately seamlessly change the the content. Like we don't even need to like stop it. We could just literally boop, fade up clip, hard cut to a clip. Like all of a sudden, box changes. Like. So it can always just change. Like, it's just like a computer that we can just like, it has this timeline that just keeps going and you can just bop anything and get into that timeline you want, anything. Into that Amazing to think, right? If somebody is fortunate enough to collect this and put this in a home or if it ends up in a museum or wherever it ends up, but I'm thinking a home, waking up in the morning and seeing what people's up to, what, what's the decision that's made? What's, what's the artwork that's rotated? And that's pretty special. I think that concept of art being a continual surprise um, is something that is not in art. All that stuff behind you, it's not changing. Right. Even the politics is bullshit. It's not changing. Um, I think that is fundamentally a very new concept and something that um, speaks more to the full potential of sort of digital art in a way that a, a painting, a print, just can't do that. Physically cannot do that, but NFTs do have the power to do that. Um, and that to me is something that I think is really exciting and is going to be explored a lot more in the future. And I'm very excited to see how people use that mindset further and, and i think ac there's places like async art that obviously have that but i think it's they're sort of very constrained by kind of like certain sort of like rules in which they can like change versus just like the artists themselves just being like mm, maybe i'll just use this as like an open canvas yeah to like just continually sort of like do things and change it that's the and brilliant sort of aspect. tell a journey, take you on a journey over a longer period of time. That's the brilliant aspect. I, I'm glad you touched in on that because we see these great examples of like Daniel Arsham doing the decaying sculpture, right? The, amazing. I mean, you know, more so than static images, that brings it up to this level. But then to yeah. your point, if you really fall in love with an artist and an artist works, knowing that your NFT can be controlled by that artist it is the next level to that because there's shock and awe and, and to your point surprise yeah and i think it it allows there's a level of trust there too mm -hmm. like if you were to have a you know screen in your house or whatever that has uh a 
you know, artwork by another artist or whatever that they can change or whatever, there's a level of trust in them that they're not going to put anything that you don't like or or maybe you know that they are going to sometimes put things that you don't like to challenge you to be like here's something you might want to not want to see but it's a message that is important to me and i think you do need to see this you know what i mean and so i think it's it's a it's a a relationship dynamic that has not existed because all those things you put on your wall, you knew exactly what you were putting on your wall. You knew they weren't going to change. It's a, you know, and that was it. You decided and you're imagine, have, imagine having a dinner party. You have a hundred guests over and people decides to, people decides to take a hard left turn. There you go. And suddenly, you know, oh my God, Jimmy just got kicked out of school. Samantha is absolutely horrified. Mm -hmm. um, that's a possibility. <laughs> it's a possibility that you tear a family that's apart. A, I actually shouldn't say that's a possibility. That is almost definitely a scenario that will happen in the future. <laughs> what are your expectations, if any, hopes, dreams, um, et cetera, around Humans One when it releases? Um, my sort of like main expectation, um, or, or sort of what I would love to see is people sort of like digging into the sort of like story and me continuing to sort of like build out the story, um, in a way that, you know, does it justice in the way that I kind of like have in my head, because again, this is a, a very ongoing project. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be lying <laughs> again, because I'm thinking about this as something I will continue to do for, for like the rest of my life. And so just like the everydays. And so I'd be lying if I was just like, I've got the next 30 years of this thing planned up. Of course I'm not. Uh, that's not the case. Um, but I do have some ideas for some sort of like directions this can go. And I think, um, I think it's really exciting. And I think once people sort of like see the possibilities for having something change um, and, and looking at storytelling and looking at um, just artwork over a longer period of time, like introducing time into things a bit more in a way that you could sort of like have a story or have a sequence of, of sort of states of an NFT happen over, you know, one day. You could have them happen over, you know, a week, you could have them over a month and, and it like really sort of like changes the meaning of it in, you know, many different ways. Just like the Daniel Archer thing happening over a year versus happening over you know, a week is, is obviously very different. And I think there's a lot to be explored around that concept. I think it would be less special if you had it mapped out. If you came out and you said, I have the next 30 years planned, you know, step by step by step, I think it would arguably be less special. You, you've, you have such yeah. trust, right? And, and deserve trust because of your long track record. You know, you've, you've done every days for so long. People have been riding this journey, that process journey of you starting from that point of pain, pain and saying, ah, this sucks at, on, on certain days, right? People trust you and they and they look to you. So having that artwork change at your whim, I, I think, is the most special thing it can be. I think it's it's I appreciate that. And I think um, to me, it's freeing in that it is a system actually, again, that I didn't really think about this. It's, it's actually kind of very similar to the everydays. But it's got an escape hatch and that I don't have to do it every single right. day. And I think to me, that's exciting to be able to sort of like take a step back and like, okay, let's plan something out. Um, that might take a couple months to sort of like do, but then we can kind of like, uh, you know, really do it at like a high level. Um, that's just not possible with the everydays. So to me, it's, it's exciting having another kind of framework to express things in a different way, but that will keep going and that kind of 
already has very sort of clear design constraints and sort of like boundaries around it, which to me is, is I think a really good thing and something that people don't um, recognize enough is that bound, putting boundaries around your artwork is a great way to sort of like rein it in here and sort of, you know, kind of be able to focus and, and put out more work. You know, sometimes when it's too blue sky mm -hmm. and uh, well, anything can be art. <laughs> Constraints can be the most powerful thing. I, I believe, believe strongly in that. Mm -hmm. People, we play a game around here. It's called, okay. the, light, it's called the lightning round. It's got a little spooky scary. I'm going to throw some stuff at you, top, okay. topics, words, etc. Snap Cheer. reaction, hot takes. Uh, if you hot feel takes. very fired up about something, you can hit timeout, break the rules, and, and go on a rant. I'm ready? Kill you, son. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lightning round, people. Here we go. And NFTs, first thing comes to mind. Good. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Ethereum. <laughs> uh great <laughs> i don't i i'm very let's, bad at this let's go let's keep it moving okay. pubic hair okay <laughs> really dude we're going there yeah that's my answer really dude perfect <laughs> politics uh bad we're going I, lightning i thought you were going with bullshit but all right let's keep let's keep it moving nifty gateway Oh, nifty. <laughs> Sons of biscuits. Every day. <laughs> uh, good. <laughs> Shrek. <laughs> green, green. I don't. This is nice. So Keep it going. But Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> American. Christie's. Uh, good. <laughs> Hillary Clinton. This really is a lightning rod. I would give you that. Hillary Clinton, I don't know. Good, I guess. I don't know. People, I have to see this through, man. You got three more. Three more. <laughs> okay. Pikachu. Uh, icon. A goat. <laughs> goat the best and lastly the year 2022 uh, a long way from now <laughs> that's fair there's probably a few more years to pass before we hit 2022 that is a, it's funny because it's sort of like like just thinking about like the NFT NYC getting through just that week mm -hmm. is like. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so now we're gonna turn it around. We got a couple more minutes here to turn around. Oh, looks like we're done. Now we're turning around. The fucking origin stories on you, motherfucker. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I didn't prepare for hey, this. I man. actually don't know. I, I actually don't know that much about sort of like what you do and sort of like your. I don't know. I, I guess beyond this podcast, I really don't know sort of like that much. Man, I came into this. What is your game? origin story, Roger Dickerman? Uh, <laughs> son of a bitch. I'll give you my 30 second version. Came into this space, uh, found the word NFT or the phrase NFT in summer of 2020, fell into it headfirst in the in the fall. Actually, your first drop was right around the time I was becoming obsessed with them. At first, it was strictly an investment. Um, wear that on my sleeve. Then all of a sudden I started to see artwork that I thought I'm, I would never be interested in selling that. I actually would like to keep that. Then soon after that, all of a sudden I developed real, real relationships, friendships with artists and just decided to sink my life into it. Pivoted everything into NFTs. Here I am. I consider myself, you know, a, a builder, a collector, a strategist around the Artifacts project. And uh, man, wouldn't change a thing. It's the first time in my life that all dots have connected and something has become uh, an unstoppable magnet like I, I have no choice here i am that's awesome dude that's awesome wait so what did you do before this 
So all the way back coming out of college, I was in a, like a private hedge fund environment, global market making firm, pivoted out of that. It just wasn't the lifestyle for me. Uh, and then I ended up taking a year to travel and explore what I wanted to do. Started a fitness and wellness business with my wife. We did that for a decade. We developed an ma amazing community and a lot of personal relationships and everything. And then uh, I started to burn out of that a little bit. And here comes the magnet. And here comes COVID first. And then here comes the magnet. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. So wait, you ran like a fitness and wellness thing for like a decade? In Philadelphia, yeah. We did We did physical stuff. We did some online programs, started to experiment with, you know, like building out communities, connecting people. And Oh, um, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no, yeah. I can see that now. Like, I can see how that kind of like connected with sort of like, you know, sort of the way you've been able to sort of like, you know, kind of like build a community. I think it's, it's, um, I, I think building, and it feels like you're building it in, in a much more sort of like true way than sort of just kind of like, let's all pump or whatever. Like, I think you're focusing on relationships and sort of like, you know, kind of like reaching out to people, which I, I very, very much appreciate. And, you know, I'm honored to be on the, you know, a part of this. Um, because I think that is the sort of like glue that holds a lot of this together. And I think you sort of like, you know, kind of like recognize that aspect of, you know, this whole space or whatever. Thank you, man. That, it means a lot to me when people see me, I guess, you know, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to use the engagement tactics and all that stuff. It's just, just going to be me, man, and follow that magnet yeah. and big credit. But that's the thing, dude, that, that will pay off in the long run because a lot of this other shit is that's fake. And it falls away very quickly. If yeah. you spent 10 years making a community around like uh, sort of wellness stuff there, you know that that is sort of like, it takes meeting people in person. It takes sort of like having that face time and sort of building deeper connections with people to build a true sort of like lasting community instead of just a pump and dump cohort of sort of you know right. that will fall away very quickly when people's exact motives don't sort of like align or whatever um and so i think focusing on the long-term aspects of the the sort of community and sort of you know what we're building here i think is is definitely advice i would give to everybody new coming to the space as well you're speaking to my heart man that's what it's all about <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'll take you back real quick i know we got to hop in a few but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. December 12th through 14th, I believe, were the dates, but it was another example of the magnet, one of my earliest examples of, of writing. It was you released your three day long spectacle, uh, that that event on Nifty Gateway, right, that started night one with bull run into the ether and, and infected and then continued through the auctions the next two days. But I remember sitting there on that Friday night and, and just watching things go like this. Uh, and, and raw, of course, the 2020 every days that rolled and just things were going like this. And it was like nothing we'd seen or, or no, I don't care if anyone says I knew that was going to happen. I think they're full of shit because it just I kept... believe they are full of shit as well. I did not think that was going to happen. And I was like freaking out. It was like, oh, my God, to make 500 boxes. What the fuck? I felt terrible, <laughs> quite honest. I literally was like, we're in way overhead. I am fucked. 500 boxes we can't make that we need one man and it was like fuck and then the next day my brother was just like yeah we got it do it do it we'll get it done yeah and then it was like oh. off we go but and then yeah sitting there though that friday night watching them just go and they didn't stop you know to that to that date on nifty usually like things would go up a little in the secondary market and then you know they level out and that night i just watched them go the next morning my wife and and daughter left for for her cousin's house and i sat there and i said i'm staying back and i just have to document this so i did my first like oral history of the people auctions and tweeted like a hundred times the next two days and that's man funny. that's a special moment in nft history yeah dude that seems like just like an insane lifetime ago like yeah, it, it is. And I will never forget that weekend. I was over at my brother's house the whole time and like our families were there and it was just this like this thing unfolding. And I'll release that video. 
I released a video. Do you, do you remember the video I released on Facebook before? Did you see that? But not not um. I remember the sure, champagne I spray after, after and, and, too, and Facebook and Instagram. What was There's the video, a video where I kind of call out pretty much exactly what happened. To be quite honest, I was sort of like this. Kind of seems like you know, sort of like a movement in art history is like building. Like I don't know. Like seems like this could be like this like big moment, and then just <clears throat> literally hours later, it was literally I recorded that hours before that. The the five minute open edition, which I believe that, that that to me was the first start of this, where it was just like, oh my God, there is like, this is like $600,000 in fucking, mm -hmm. you know, five minutes. Like, this is like crazy. This is, or that's like already like by far, like sort of like <laughs> destroy all the like records or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like, poof, and then the auction's just going like ape shit. Like everything changed overnight. Uh it, it literally changed overnight from that Friday into Saturday. And it was like, everyone was thinking about things differently. The first auction on the block, I believe was, was the goat artwork. And I had, I, I had foolish hopes. I think I put in a few bids. I think I won the blockchain, you know, I put in a few, and then just, it just, but, 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 and then four or five auctions in, it looked like it might take a small step. Nope. And then it just kept going. Yeah. It was just, it was just the craziest thing. And it was just like, I'm like, you know, suddenly I'm like fucking DMing with Sean Lennon and it's like, what, the, <laughs> what is going on? Like, what the hell just happened? Like, um, yeah, especially because that again still was only like a month into this thing, like mm -hmm. two months into learning of NFTs. It was like, I just learned of these things two months ago. And now yeah. like literally in that one weekend, $3.5 million it was like, what the amazing just insane so it was just yeah the whole journey has been <laughs> a thing it's been a thing and in some ways it's just beginning right human one coming soon i mean uh yeah as you put it a years long journey after release oh yeah no yeah yeah it's got a lot of life and that's to me what's so exciting like having this out now knowing that it's very much just the beginning so keep watching that nft it might, it might surprise you let's go people episode 50 of origin stories it couldn't be anyone other than you thanks for spending the time man appreciate Thank you, you. i appreciate it man